I apologize for interrupting you during your busy time. My name is Ayumu Narumi, calling from Lovecoy Internet Support Dial. I'm Ayumu Narumi, a 26 year old employee at All Trade Inc., a business outsourcing company. Currently, I work in a call center handling operations outsourced by a major telecom company called Lovecoy Internet. My job involves informing new Lovecoy Internet customers about installation dates and other related matters. Thank you very much for your time. Please have a good day. Your guidance was as smooth as always. Impressive work, Narumi-kun. Not really. I just got lucky this time since the customer didn't have any complicated questions. Her name is Emma Tono. She's a colleague at All Trade Inc. and joined the company at the same time as I did. Before working in a call center, Emma was involved in clerical work outsourced from another company. Incidentally, I started working in a call center about six months before she did. One day, I was approached by Kuniya Kojo, the call center manager. He's also an employee at All Trade Inc. and is known for being very strict. What's this? You've already met today's quota? Yes, but there are still pending tasks, so I was planning to handle them gradually. Then add 10 more to that. Once you're done, I'll give you another badge. What? This call center is in charge of outbound calls to customers. Managers assign each employee a daily quota of 30 outbound calls. With the busy season approaching, and the increase in new contracts, it's understandable that the number of calls has gone up, but... Please, refrain from giving me four urgent callback cases all at once. The customers are waiting, and it would be better to distribute them one by one to the other employees. It's a simple matter of you handling them quickly. Even if everything goes smoothly, each call takes about 10 minutes. If something goes wrong, it could take even longer. If a customer asks for a quick callback and we contact them an hour later, it would leave a bad impression. I told him I could handle one of them, but asked him to distribute the remaining three to other employees. Kojo reluctantly agreed and reallocated the cases, but then... Can you take care of this? Narumi here is too incompetent to handle it. Kojo said it loud enough for me to hear, clearly intending to provoke me, and my irritation only grew. Damn it. Instead of treating me like an idiot, how about managing the tasks better? Kojo's petty behavior kept escalating day by day, and it was wearing me down my way home. Oh, Narumi-kun. Emma approached me, and my mood lightened a bit. We ended up walking to the station together, but Emma seemed troubled. You seem to be having a rough time lately. Yeah, Kojo has been giving me a hard time. It's like he's suddenly decided to single me out. I'm sorry, but that's my fault. Huh? What do you mean? As Emma explained, it turned out that Kojo had been hitting on her for some time. I kept politely rejecting him, but one day he suddenly said, So you must like Narumi, and walked off before I could deny it. I tried to clarify things afterward, but he wouldn't listen. So now it seems like he sees you as a romantic rival, Narumi-kun. What the hell? That's ridiculous! Yeah... I'm really sorry for causing you trouble. Oh no! It's not you I'm mad at! Seeing Emma shrink down, I scrambled to think of a way to reassure her. Hey, would you consider a transfer? Huh? There's an opening at Lovecoy Internet's regional shipping center. Before the call center, I worked at the shipping center at the Tokyo headquarters. I was recently offered a transfer to the regional branch due to a vacancy. They're looking for two people, so if you're interested, maybe you could apply too? I think they would accept your request if you mention Kojo as well. I can transfer, so I'll definitely consider it. Thank you, Narumi-kun. She gave a relieved smile, as if a heavy burden had been lifted, and I felt a sense of relief too. Emma consulted with HR, and we were both transferred to the regional branch. Today's our first day at the shipping center, and a senior employee is training us. Narumi-kun, Tono-san, nice to meet you. Narumi-kun, have you worked in shipping before? Yes, but there might have been changes since I was here, so I would appreciate it if you could guide me from the beginning. It's my first time, so I'll do my best to learn quickly. 
Lovko Internet's rental equipment is usually shipped from a warehouse. But for urgent needs, the shipping center handles the dispatch. For example, it's useful for replacing faulty equipment or expediting installation dates. The most important thing is to double-check that the shipping label details match the registered equipment. Check if the shipping label matches the customer's address, name, and requested delivery date. Also, before shipping, verify that the customer information is correctly linked to the equipment details. Lovecoin Internet's equipment only functions when linked to customer information. Sending out unregistered equipment would inconvenience the customer since they wouldn't be able to use it. Always have someone else double-check the shipping labels and equipment information before sending anything out. Even a small mistake can lead to a big problem, so stay alert! Yes! I'm trying to stay positive, but I'm still worried about doing the job well. On the way home after work, Emma voiced her concern. Well, it's your first day on the job, so it's natural to feel that way. Hey, Tono-san, the fundamental aspects of the call center and the shipping center are the same. The key is how well we can meet the needs of Lovecoin Internet's customers. You've gained a lot of experience at the call center, right? As a result, you've learned to listen carefully to customer needs and adapt quickly, haven't you? That experience will definitely be useful at the shipping center. Once you've learned the ropes, you'll become a top performer here too. Let's work together to make that happen. Yeah, thank you. When you say it, Narumi-kun, it really feels like it could be true. Time passed, and Emma has indeed become a top performer. Narumi-kun, could you check the equipment I prepared? It was a last-minute request, but I managed to get it done before the shipping deadline. Sure thing. You've really got the hang of this job now, Tono-san. <laughs> you think so? I'm glad to see Tono-san doing so well. She's gotten used to the job, but it's also probably because she no longer has to deal with Kojo. The call center is at the Tokyo headquarters, so it's rare for managers to come all the way to a regional branch. I hope things stay peaceful like this. Meanwhile, back at Old Trade Inc., a bit of drama was unfolding in the HR department. Why won't you approve my transfer? We've received multiple reports about your behavior toward Tono-san and Narumi-kun. There's no way we can approve transferring you to their department under those circumstances. You should be reflecting on your demotion to an operator instead of wasting time with such nonsense. Apparently, former manager Kojo had requested the transfer to our department, but was denied. His harassment of us had been reported, leading to his demotion. Now, he's handling customer service calls instead of managerial duties. Damn it! They just ran away! Why am I the one who's stuck in this mess? It seems Kojo's mind is preoccupied with everything but his actual work. A few days later, Emma and I had the same day off, so we went to a home electronics store together. You're looking for a small freezer, right? Yeah, I eat a lot of ice cream, but my current freezer doesn't have enough space. So I'm thinking of getting a dedicated freezer just for ice cream. Really? How much do you eat in a day? Let's see. I'd say I eat at least five a day. What? What? When I'm tired, I crave chocolate-flavored ice cream. But then I want something to cleanse my palate, so I go for a sherbet. And before I know it, I've eaten five just to feel satisfied. Tono-san, you're quite the big eater. Despite my surprise at Tono-san's unexpected appetite, we successfully purchased a small freezer. Just as we were about to leave, I noticed the Lovecoy Internet sign-up booth. Those customers look really happy. Yeah, I bet they're excited to start using Lovecoin Internet services. In our work, we don't usually get to see customers face to face. But seeing this up close makes me realize how our work truly connects with people. We may only be contractors, not actual employees of Lovecoin Internet, but... I want to continue working sincerely, so we don't disappoint those smiles. Yeah, you're right. We don't hear customers' voices directly anymore, unlike in the call center. But the shipping center's work still involves dealing with customers. We can still improve a lot, don't you think? Yeah, I think so too. Tono-san is really amazing. She's so dedicated to her work and always gives her best effort. For a while, I was mesmerized by the look of determination on her face. 
A few months later, the new manager at the call center was giving Koju a stern look. Customer satisfaction scores from call surveys have been steadily declining. I have reviewed the feedback, and all the complaints were about calls handled by you, Kojo. No way. I was a manager, you know. There's no way I would handle a call poorly enough to get complaints. Just because you were promoted doesn't mean your call handling skills are perfect. But if you can't manage basic tasks, how can you handle escalations? If Kojo had been performing at his best, these complaints wouldn't have happened, but... I also reviewed the recorded calls, and it seemed like you weren't focused on the conversations. You also tried to cut off the calls when they were taking too long. Given that, it's no wonder customers felt you were being careless. Kojo wasn't focused on his work, likely distracted by other things. As a result, customer dissatisfaction grew with each call he handled. If Narumi-kun were here, our customer satisfaction might have improved. But it's too late to say that now. Damn it! Why is everyone always going on about Narumi? Kojo was desperate to improve the customer satisfaction scores. He tried to fulfill every customer request, no matter what. Yes, we have an opening on the day you requested, so I'll book your installation for that day. Of course, it's not wrong to try to meet customer needs, but... Kojo! This installation is double booked! Kojo had made the booking without checking the availability properly, leading to a double booking. No, no I double-checked that it was available! This booking was made a week ago! It's clearly Kojo's oversight! You need to call the customer immediately to correct and apologize. I'm sorry, but we can't do the installation on your requested date. What? You told me it was available. So I planned everything around that. I'm sorry, but there's nothing we can do now. What do you mean, nothing? You make it sound like it's my fault. I want to speak to your manager right now. We sincerely apologize for the inconvenience caused by Kojo's actions. It seems that the customer was appeased by the manager's intervention, but... Mistakes can happen, but trying to avoid responsibility is unacceptable. Kojo was placed on suspension until a formal decision on his punishment could be made. Whoa, getting caught up in all that drama. I can only say good riddance. It feels like transferring was the right choice in so many ways. Of course, I feel sorry for the HR department and everyone else at the call center except Kojo. On our way home after work, Emma and I discussed the rumors we had heard about former manager Kojo. There you are, Emma-chan! Kojo-san? Why are you- I stood between Emma and Kojo, who was supposed to be on suspension, to keep him away from her. What are you doing here? You're supposed to be under house arrest. Shut up! If you hadn't gotten in my way, I wouldn't be in this mess. Emma-chan, why would you choose someone like Narumi? He couldn't even follow my instructions properly. He's useless. I was the one who made it to manager. I'm more capable and can make you happy. Sure, I'm going through a rough patch, but with you by my side, I'll be back as a manager in no time. So come back to the call center with me. N no I don't want to. Why not? I've always been kind to you, haven't I? This is something I learned after the transfer, but Kojo had been trying to pamper Emma all along. When she first joined the call center, he kept saying, Emma-chan doesn't need to do anything. I promise I'll never make you feel stressed again. At that moment, I sensed that Emma's fear had shifted to another emotion. That's right. Kojo-san, you never pushed me too hard. R really I never you'd understand. I just wanted to be kind to you. Kojo's eyes lit up as if Emma's words confirmed his feelings. The shipping center job isn't without its challenges, is it? You're better off where I can protect you from all that stress. But that's not what I wanted. What? I didn't want to be pampered. I wanted to be able to do my job like everyone else. But whenever I asked for advice, all you would say was, you don't need to do anything. It made me feel useless. 
like I would never amount to anything. But it was Narumi-kun who supported me through that. I think you're overcomplicating things, Tono-san. Emma used to get really down when she was struggling with the call center job. I thought it was a shame to see her so upset, so I gave her some advice, even though I knew it might be unwelcome. Sure, we have quotas, but the job exists because of the customers, right? So I think the most important thing is to keep thinking about what we can do for each customer. Narumi-kun's words made me realize that I was overwhelmed. I didn't have the mental space to truly connect with the customers. After that, Narumi-kun kept helping me, bringing out my strengths. While talking with her, I noticed that Emma was quick to learn and had a good sense of intuition. So I thought if she could understand how to answer certain questions, she would become a valuable asset. As a result, Emma started asking more questions about how to handle different situations, and her work worries decreased in turn. Narumi-kun genuinely cares about people who are struggling. His high customer satisfaction scores were probably because of that. That's why I fell for Narumi-kun. Because he said we'd work hard together, Kojo-san. You just wanted to indulge me for your own satisfaction. That didn't make me happy at all. And I could never love you for it. That, that's... Kojo-san, I'm sure you were competent enough to become a manager. But I don't feel like you genuinely care about the customer's feelings anymore. Because if you did, you wouldn't be making so many mistakes that upset them. The harassment before I transferred, and the mistakes he made afterward, could have been avoided if he had considered the customer's feelings. My guess is that he was treating each call as just another task, without considering the person on the other end. Maybe that's why he didn't realize there was a human being on the other side of the phone. And I'll be reporting to the company that you came all the way out here during your suspension. Please stop harassing Tono-san. If you try anything like this again, I won't hesitate to involve the police. Kojo was eventually fired from all trade for violating his suspension terms. He's still hung up on getting rejected by Emma, and hasn't looked for another job, staying holed up in his room. Why, Emma-chan? She could have been happy with me. Kojo mumbles to himself as he stares blankly into space. If he doesn't change his self-centered way of thinking, he'll never be able to move on. Meanwhile, as for us... Wait, I didn't have time to think about it earlier, but... Tono-san said, she likes me? The day Kojo showed up, I was walking with Emma, and suddenly, my face felt hot! Um, so... Narumi-kun? Next to me, Emma's face was bright red, even in the dark, making it clear that I hadn't misheard her. Tono-san, I've also been drawn to how dedicated you are to everything you do. Would you go out with me? Yes! In our work, we don't meet customers face to face, but we must never forget that they are real people. Each customer has a life, and our job is to help make their lives better. With that in mind, we'll continue to approach our work and our customers with sincerity.